Today's episode is made possible by Component One, the makers of an array of widely popular .NET products like Studio Enterprise, Active Reports, and Spread. Component One's collection of developer tools combines the best functionality, features, and support you need for current and future application development. Hey, this is David McCarter. Welcome to another episode of 256 Seconds with .NET Dave. This week, we're going to actually talk about not code. What I want to talk about is something that I experienced recently when I went to go for an interview. But anyway, I was running out the door and I had to remember the things you need to take to an interview. So here they are. First thing you need to take to your interview are copies of your resume. My recommendation is to take at least a copy for everybody you're going to be interviewing with plus one for yourself. Sometimes as an interviewer, we don't get enough chance to go over your resume, print it out because we're running around, putting out fires and all kinds of things like that. So sometimes it's tough for us to get your resume. Actually, a lot of places I go to, they don't have my resume. So I always take a nice color version of my resume. Remember, if you're going there through a recruiter, make sure to take their version of your resume, copy it out, color, but take one copy for everyone plus you. The plus you is for you to reference your own resume without going, um, well, I think back in 1995, I did this. You'll have it right here with you. Next thing you need to take is how to get to your job interview. Here I have printed out from Google Maps a map on how to get to my job interview. Now, I always take two versions of a map. So I'll take Google Maps here. I also take a version on my phone to have it tell me where to go. You never know what's going to happen. Your phone not's going to work. You run out of battery. So that's why you need the paper copy. In San Diego, I plan to be there 30 minutes early. Um, LA, you might want to do an hour early. In San Diego, I do 30 minutes early. But don't go in 30 minutes early. Only go in a couple minutes early. What do you do for those other minutes while you're sitting in your car? Go over your technical interview questions that you have looked up on the web or on my DVD or something like that. Go over them in your car so it's all fresh in your memory before you go in. But don't go into your interview 30 minutes early. That's just going to put pressure on the people that are going to be interviewing you. The next thing you need to take is the name of your of the person you're going to be seeing when you first get into the company. That's usually the name of the person the receptionist calls. Make sure you have this with you. I had somebody come interview with me once. After waiting 20 minutes for them to show up, I decided to go down and see if they were sitting with the receptionist. And guess what? They were. They were sitting down there for 20 minutes because this person came into the interview and said, I'm here for the .NET job. <laughs> well, <laughs> The receptionist usually doesn't know about any of the interview schedule going on, let alone I'm here for the .NET job. That person didn't have my name. I think I went through the interview, but that didn't go well and they didn't really pass the interview process. Just because of that, make sure you have the name of the person you're going to be meeting with when you get to the company. I always put it in my calendar event that shows up on my phone. The last thing you need to take for your interview process is business cards. Always have professional business cards available so you can take them to the interview and give them out to the person per or persons you've interviewed with. This usually I do this when I say thank you or maybe when I first get there, but make sure you have business cards on how they can get in touch with you. Even if you're going through a recruiting company, it's good to give them a business card. And on my business card, I have um, my MVP logo because I'm a Microsoft MVP, um, an image of my book, but put other things in there, you know, make it look really nice, professional color. If you have some uh, certifications and things like that, that have a logo associated with them, put that on your business card, anything to make yourself look better. You're there to prove to them why you're the person for that job and anything that makes you look more professional will work, including business cards like these. So that's it for this episode. So remember, here are the things you need to take. Take copies of your resume, 
a copy for every person you're going to be interviewing with, plus one for yourself. Take multiple maps on how to get to the location, unless you went there the day before. Take the name of the person you're going to be interviewing with, very, very important, and take business cards. If you take these four things every time you walk out of the door, your tech interview will go much better. And don't forget to come see Rock Your Technical Interview at a conference near you on the Rock.net Dave Rock the Nation tour. So check that out. Go to my webpage, .nettips.com, to see when I'll be speaking next, hopefully in your area. If not in your area, shoot me an email, and I'll see what I can work out. Thanks a lot, and see you next time on 256 Seconds with Donet Dave. What if I told you Component One has developed the first toolkit of its kind, one where developers can touch enable their entire application complete with gesture support and many other features, regardless if you use Component One controls, another vendor's controls, or out-of-the-box controls? It's true, and now you know. Learn more at componentone.com. That's O-N-E.com.